What's up, everybody? It's been a rough week for me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm here now. Uh, my, my energy seems a little low. I had to get a test yesterday, a medical exam, and uh, they have to, like, sedate you. So I'm still kind of like, uh, I don't feel like myself. I don't know who I feel like, but it's not me. But uh, I'm here. I'm going to do the very best that I can and, uh, you know, t tackle this, sub this subject that we've been putting off for a while here. Um, I wanted to talk about, we've talked about in, I don't know, last year maybe? I did a video on self-esteem, or maybe it was even longer than that. I don't know. I've done a webinar on self-esteem that was very intimate, full of a lot of information with slides and stuff for a select group. Um, earlier this year, or actually just a month or two ago, we talked about, um, you know, I talked about how to say no. That was another one that I did earlier this year, I think. And then just a few, like a month or so ago, I did one talking about, um, you know, women being a little bit more uh, assertive, you know, standing up for themselves. But a lot of people missed that show. I don't remember why, but a lot of people missed it. And uh, the time was short, so I wanted to kind of pick up where I left off and go into a little bit more uh, detail of what about what I meant when I was talking about self-realization. Uh, um, because part of that is, you know, part of being assertive is uh, is based upon someone knowing themselves and trusting and believing in themselves and who and what they are. If you don't, oh the volume is low, let me adjust my mic. Some of that might be because my ass is just dragging, I'm telling you. I, uh, well, I don't know. That might be the, the microphone, it was a little low. Um, what you want to do, though, and you know, feel free to adjust the the volume on your computer, because, uh, like I said, I'm still under the the uh, influence of um, what's that stuff they give you? Anesthesia. So I'm a little out of it. You know, I'm a tad bit out of it. But uh, I will do better. I'll try to talk a little louder. I can't drink any till I get it, this stuff gets out of my system. I'll pass out. But anyway, what I wanted to do was talk about, you know, I think a lot of women don't feel good about being assertive. And, uh, oh, good to see you here, Rach. Because you guys don't feel confident about who you are yet. Once you feel confident about who you are as a woman and what you stand for and what you believe in and what your goals are and what you will and will not tolerate, then you have no problem being assertive. But I think some of you guys, nope, it's medication from yesterday's anesthesia. I'm still like trying to, you know, come out from under it. I'm telling you, I'm, it's nothing that interesting. Trust me. Um, so what you got is... Um, you know, if when women are still kind of pitching around, trying to figure out who they are and what they are, you know, you're still kind of in people-pleasing mode. You know what I mean? You don't really want to stand out too much. You don't want to say no. You're just too afraid to offend people and hurt people's feelings and, and all of this stuff. So that's the majority. And then there are those who are um, so aggressive that every you can't even talk to them because every little thing that you say they take it the wrong way and want to you know go to blows and cuss everybody out just for just basic stuff and those kind of women are really hard to deal with too oh i'm going to do that after i finish this though but i'm telling you oh we'll see how far i get <laughs> let's put it that way but um this is just it's just you know it's just a lot of it is is you guys don't have the belief in yourself that you a have the right to say no that you have the right to set boundaries that you have uh the right to deserve and ask for things you know other than what people give you 
that you know you still into too much of pleasing of people and uh i have an example a young lady posted on the um on the channel wall here on youtube that i want to read you but first let me go into this and tell you i want to define so as we move forward you understand what we're talking about so i'm talking about self-realization as being a foundation for women's assertiveness building and you know confidence in themselves and, and it's the higher self-esteem it's all based on self-realization and what is that it's the development fulfillment and actualization of your own potential or ob or abilities so that means that you are working towards being your best self and you're not too worried about uh, I'm going to turn my light up here. You're not too worried about what other people think about you and how their perception of you and all of that kind of stuff. You treat others with respect, but you want about your grind and what's going to be the best way for you to live your life. And you do that with confidence in who and what you are. So that's going to be the foundation of our conversation today on self-realization. But let me read you something that this young lady uh, posted and I thought, wow, this is really interesting. I wanted to print this out. Oh, we got somebody all the way from Germany. wonder what time it is over there. Wow. These time zones. We had somebody from France the other day. And uh, so now German and a lot of Canadians coming here. So it's just kind of interesting. It's got like an international crowd. So she posted this. And I want you guys to listen to this carefully. Because I'm going to make some comments about it in a few minutes. Notice how many things that she let this guy say to her. Okay, I just blocked a man that I knew for two months and he was claiming that he loved me. Okay, that's point one. He loved her. Number two, he wanted things or he would find somebody else to do it. He wanted me to drop my 10-year career, 10 year career to move out of state as soon as possible after that same two months. He would say things like he knew I had more than one whole moment and that he never experienced this kind of thing with a light-skinned woman. Okay, that's five. We're going to repeat. I laughed too hard with the men at my job and thought that if given the opportunity, I'd cheat. He wanted the same phone plan after two months. He hated when I laughed with male colleagues. He wanted to go to sleep on the phone every night. Okay, that's two hands full. Let's start again. He would go out and proceed to text me. He said he didn't trust me. He called me suspect over the littlest thing. If I fell asleep and he couldn't reach me, I was doing something with another man. He would say some crazy-ish. Okay, so that's 5, 10, 14 things. Okay, this we continue. Today, I communicated to him something that made my eyebrow raise. I had an impromptu meeting with someone at work and had to abruptly hang up. He then texted me to the effect that a guy asked if I had a minute and I had to hang up. Okay, we're on 15 now. It was not a guy and I did have a meeting. I then asked him if this was some more of his trust stuff. He said he, to, he told me he meant to say another word instead of guy and I told him I didn't believe him. I actually tried to understand. What followed was a 45-minute conversation about how I was annoying for continuing to ask questions when he already told me it was a mistake. Okay, now we're on 17. 17 violations. That was just today. I finally told him, you know what? Get the fuck off my phone. I'm sick of you, and I blocked him on everything. I'm not even sad or mad. I just feel free. I'm no angel, but shit just was not right. I had to get the hell on, and so I did. Okay, so she finally did do it. But, I mean, okay, 17. It took 17. And plus, she's probably left some stuff out. 17 violations for you to see that this man was a fool and crazy and that you, he was violating every kind of boundary that you should have had in place as a woman who knows her value, her worth, and where her position in her own life. See, he would have got one. I mean, just any one of those things with me would be like immediate termination. One thing you're not going to do is question me about anything. 
If I want you to know something, I will tell you. So you don't come asking me who is that on the phone and, you know, why I have to hang up. And I, I do not like to talk on the phone. My friends will tell you that. I will talk for a little while, and then I get, I'm telling you, I have ADD. I didn't know that's what I had, but I'll get to, like, doing other stuff and distracted and just, you know, I'm not really a good person on the phone. I'm not that good. I admit it, and every one of my friends knows it. So this thing, going to sleep on the phone every night, that would have been like, no, we're not going to do that ever, not one time. And, uh, you know, questioning her and telling her that she was a sus, she was suspect. I mean, it's like he's got you guilty of, of you know, so he, he's putting you in a position where you got to do that jump through hoops thing that I talked about a couple of years ago when I did that series. You got to jump through hoops to try to prove to him that you're not like the women who hurt him and that he can trust you. I'd be like, nigga, you know what? This is over. Bye and just hang up so she did you know she finally got got fed up but see this is the kind of thing that happens when you're not assertive you just take it you take it you take it you take it and then finally you do the pl passive aggressive blow up which is what she did because instead of saying look you know your behavior is inappropriate i don't want you questioning me about these things see that's assertiveness but just taking it taking it taking it taking it and then blowing up and then blocking them on everything that's a passive aggressive response you were passive all the way till the end then you went aggressive on dude and blocked him on everything without even a word of explanation for why you know or what was going on with you you never let him know so that's what i don't want you to do this i mean it's good that she got rid of him don't get me wrong that part's good but the way that this all went down was not the way that i want you guys to be handling yourself and it was a superb <clears throat> Excuse me, a perfect example. They just showed up like right on time. You know, so let's talk about, let me go back to my slides. Let's talk about what self-realization is. Now, I know everyone here is familiar with this quote that's attributed to Nelson Mandela. It's also attributed to Miriam Williamson, so... It's hard to know since I wasn't at either one of them's speech who actually said it. But most people say Nelson Mandela, so let's roll with that. And I, I want to read this to you because sometimes, you know, when people read things themselves, they don't put the proper emphasis on it. And uh, they um, or they don't really understand what they're saying. So not everyone reads well out loud. So I'm going to read it for you. This is a quote from Nelson Mandela. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We are born to manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Okay? And that is my rendition of how that that is supposed to be read. That's very meaningful because this happens a lot with women. You know, you guys get into this thing where you feel like, you know, you want to build your man up. You got to make him feel sh shy and you got to, you know, not talk about how much money you make, not talk about how much you know, not talk about how much your your uh, education is and, and just downplay yourself. You downplay yourself. You kind of shrink yourself in order to make other people feel better about their lacking. But you should never do that. You should always enjoy the hard work that you put into building up yourself and making yourself the wonderful person that you are today. Even if you're still working on yourself, you're not perfect. No, none of us are. 
but there are some who are closer to being the idea of perfection that they have for themselves than others who have not even started on that road. They either let other people define who and what they should be, or they just sit there in fear of failing so they don't do anything. They don't try anything. They don't try to become anything. They don't want to learn anything. They always focus on the failure and what's going to happen if I don't instead of, well, what can happen if I do? And that's what I want you guys to do because, you know, you have to have that belief in yourself that you are enough. You don't need to have a man to be a beautiful woman. You don't need to have some guy tell you that you're beautiful for you to know that you are. You tell yourself that. You know what I mean? It's like you you have to feel the greatness from within. And that's why I come here and do this stuff, to do this work, to get you to understand how fabulous you are. And like I said, some of you are really young and you're just starting on the road to your fabulosity. You're not, you're not. But then you got this old people like me, you know, we already been there, done that. And, you know, we pretty much at the end of the road on that. So then you turn around and you share what you've done to get to where you are with others and help make their path easier. But you got to believe that you're fabulous. You got to believe that you're talented. You got to believe that you're smart gorgeous everything about you is wonderful the things that you think could use improvement because i never say bad i say well you know i could use some improvement that is something that you have to do so that you stay positive and continue to do the work that's going to push you forward okay this is very 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 somebody got blocked i don't know who how that happened we haven't been blocking nobody oh maybe youtube blocked you but I haven't been blocking anybody. Okay, so that's, you know, that's that. So let's go back to the slides. Now here, this is a quote from me. Because I, this is what me sharing my idea of what assertiveness is. And it's the difference between uh, being aggressive or being passive and being assertive. So let me read it to you. Assertiveness is a style of communication and behaviors which describe the manner in which a woman expresses her thoughts, her feelings, her wants, and her needs. It's not rude, it's not pushy, and it's not mean. So get that out of your head. That's how a lot of you think. The assertive communication style is clear, is direct, and is honest, while it also respects the rights and the needs of other people. Assertiveness demonstrates respect and acknowledges freedom of choice because it allows for others to be who and who, what they want to be while clearly communicating what you communicating rather what you will and will not accept from your perspective. I'll go over this in a minute after I finish. Assertiveness will help you communicate better. It'll help you make better decisions, improve your confidence and raise your self-esteem, increase the respect that others have for you, and will guide your path so that you always, always, always stay true to your beliefs and your life goals. Okay? This is mandatory. I should, I'm going to put this on the wall, this slide rather, on the wall in the community thing on YouTube so that you guys can go there and you can screenshot it and you can you know I don't know put it on your desktop print it out I mean whatever you want to do but this is the, to me a very important part of the programming that is on this channel for you to understand that you standing up for yourself then why I mean you standing up for yourself there's nothing wrong with that okay there's nothing wrong with that. You have to do it, though, in a way that respects other people. And that's when people get very, you know, ridiculous. They, um, they just, like, tread over people like a sociopath, and they just care about what they want. Now, what you do is you define what, who and what you are and what you, who, what you will and will not accept from people. And then other people either adhere to your program or they get out your life, get out your face. Those are the two choices, you know. And your, your ability to be assertive will clearly communicate to that, that to them. Here, I wanted to show you the, the three types of communication that women tend to do. Okay, the passive, where you don't say nothing. You don't stand up for yourself. It's like, you know, that should say, instead of passive, it should say doormat, you know, floor. Because you just lay down and let people walk all over you. 
Okay, you let them mistreat you and you keep going back for more. These women have right to call him here talking about, well, you know, I know he hurt me and he says mean things to me and he's rude and he just and that he beats my ass. He stuff. But I love him, though. Okay, that's passive because you're not doing nothing. You talk shit like I'm going to leave him if he does, then he does it. Then what do you do? You stay. So you're disrespecting yourself. When you have a passive kind of communication style, you just take anything that people dish out to you. You don't never say nothing. You don't never stand up for yourself. You don't never voice your, your wishes, your dreams, your ideas, your, your what you want. You don't never say nothing. You just sit there and let people treat you any kind of way, and you just accept what it is they want to give you like you some little beggar on the street. Okay, that's total disrespect of yourself. That's the passive style. Then you go to the other side, right? The other end of the spectrum are the women who are just aggressive. I think that's what happened when the conversation we had the other day when we did, you know, uh, What the Fuck Wednesday, and I talked about the man who wrote in talking about how his wife got in some other man's face about a room and on a vacation, and she want to argue with the dude, and just all, and wanted him to go fight the dude about a room and all. I mean, just stupid. She was doing just too much, just way over into left field. And this is, that's the aggressive style. A lot of guys have that style too, where they don't respect other people's wishes and things that are opposing what they want. We see this with the with these incel people that want to go run over it. People, women, they shoot up scholars and stuff because the girls won't give them the t- attention and the sex that they want. They get mad. And so they go and they aggressively go and m- mow people down with guns. Okay? They're disrespecting the fact that other people are different and may not want what they want. And they're not giving people the room to do that. They want what they want when they want it. And they demand to have it. And those are the aggressive people. Then we come to the middle. This is where this is the best thing. Where you are, respect both sides. If you think someone, um, you know, if someone doesn't want to give you what it is that you ask them for, you still thank them and give them, you know, a cordial greeting, goodbye, whatever. It doesn't change anything in your world. You just go elsewhere and get it or you do it for yourself. Um, You don't overdo it on the paths of people either. You respect them. Just be, even though they're not respecting themselves, you respect them because that's the right thing to do. This is an issue I take that I have with guys who say, well, you know, she let me do it. She didn't let you do it. You chose to do it. And that's because the woman is passive and stuck in that, you know, I need to please my man shit. That doesn't mean that you mistreat her just because she doesn't. What you're supposed to do is help the sister understand what she's doing. Where does being passive-aggressive go? Those are the people who volley between two ends. They not in the middle. They out one end, then they ping-pong to the other end. Then they ping-pong back. They just, you know, they go back and forth. So they, um, and that's what this lady did with, in the letter that I read. So let me go back to where I was. Here, here I is. So, you know, I hope that explains to you what, um, you know, what I had in mind about, you uh, this, uh, you know, the assertiveness thing. And I think a lot of times people who aren't assertive ones who like they have an interaction with somebody, right? And then later they go away, they don't really say too much, but then they're angry. So they go away later and they say, oh, you know, I should have said, you know, blah, ah, ah, you know, I should have, I, you know, and so they, they beat themselves up. First they beat themselves up because they didn't say anything, and then they beat themselves up again after it's all over because they think, then they think of all the things that they should have said, and so, you know, then they, they got like the double beating from themselves. So let's go over. I have another slide here with the things on it that I want to talk about today. This list here, we're going to go over this one by one and we are going to talk about the things that women do who are not assertive if you guys can think of some examples in your either in yourselves or some that you have observed you know feel free to put them in the chat um you know it's it it would be fine to do that you know just understand though that you know stand up for yourself that's like your basic human right you know, you can't defend on, depend on other people to defend you. Uh, you have to defend yourself because most people are the kind, not all, but most, are the kind that are going to take advantage of a situation. You know, if you if you don't say nothing, they're going to take advantage of it. It doesn't mean they're going to necessarily do something that's going to, you know, physically hurt you, but it just means they may do a little bit more and not be as fair with the give and take 
um, as they should be. So let's talk about this list. Let me see. Now I'm gonna do this because I want to make sure I can see this list really well. Uh, oops, I lost my slide. Hold on a second. Okay, here we go. Women who are wishy-washy. No, women don't only want guys' money because most of the motherfuckers don't have none. So, I mean, what the fuck? You can't get get blood from a turnip. These dudes don't have no job and they don't have no money. So, they ain't running no business and they just don't have shit. That's why they are hobosexuals. So, let's stick to the topic. So, let's talk about women who are not assertive. Okay, women who are not assertive tend to be wishy-washy. What does that mean? That means you tell a dude, oh, um, you know, I, I refuse to stay with some man who cheats. Did you find out dude cheats? Where's your ass? Still with him. You say, oh, I would like some, you know, sauce for pepperoni pizza for dinner. You know, that's what I really want. Dude's like, well, I don't like pepperoni. I want sausage and mushroom. And you say, but I really like pepperoni. I don't really like sausage and mushroom. And then he says, but I hate sausage. I don't like pepperoni, so I want sausage and mushroom. And so then what do you do? You give in and you say, okay, well, let's just have sausage and mushroom. The most you should do is compromise, which is a C word that I really hate, and say, well, then let's do this. Let's get a half and half. I want my half pepperoni and your half can be sausage and mushroom. Okay, now what is that? That is what I just showed you on that slide. That's in the middle. It's assertive. It's saying, well, I'm not going to give up what I want so you could be happy. That's passive. Okay, and that's what a lot of women do. And y'all think that it's about, um, no, you on a date. You with your partner, okay? You know, this is somebody you're dating. Come on now. It's not always about getting your own. It's about working with the person. I'm trying to give you ties techniques for working with the okay see jay that's why your ass got blocked i see now because you about to get blocked the same thing on twitch you keep it up watch your fucking language okay i don't know what kind of people you used to ass, but you don't come here with that bullshit because i will boost your fucking ass up out of here i don't like that kind of shit and we don't bring that to my chats you don't say shit about women little motherfucker how do i get this shit all out of my chat I need a moderator on Twitch. Hold the fuck on. Let me get over to Twitch and fuck boot this little fucker out. Little asshole. I can't stand people that know how to fucking act when they come someplace. Hold on, you guys. I'll be right back. What is this little fucker's name? Oh, I know what I can do. Is that who else is watching on Twitch? Probably nobody. So let me just do this. Okay. There we go. Okay, now back to the topic. Yeah, you know, and it's like I already don't feel so good, and now I have to be bothered with bullshit. Okay, that was what, first I was assertive, and then I went aggressive, because now I booted that little fucker up out of here. All right, now, let's move on to what we was talking about before I was so rudely interrupted by a little fucktard. Oh, it's most, it's a, that place is full of, full of little trolls, because, you know, they're young, they're young and silly. And they don't have any home training, and that's what they do, get their jollies, because they don't know how to talk to women or anything, so they come around acting stupid. 
Yeah, he gone. I just switched. I closed Twitch out. So unfortunately, if anybody else is on Twitch, they just have to come over here. Oh well. All right, because I'm I'm just don't feel like it today. I'm I just I don't feel good. Like I said, I don't feel that great, and I'm trying to do this. Um, okay, so that was my example of wishy-washy. Now, the assertive woman stood up for herself and said, well, I'm not going to eat that, and you don't want to eat this, and that's fine. I'm respecting your choice. See, remember what I said about respect? But what we're going to do then, because I'm not going to eat that, and you don't want to eat that, so we're going to we're going to get half and half. And he might say, well, that costs an extra dollar. Fly his ass a dollar, and then never go out with him again. That's what I say about that. All right, now, timid. What are timid women? Those are the ones who never say nothing. They kind of cower. You see them in their posture, they be like this. You know, they be like this about everything, looking down. And, you know, you just there's people that just look like a victim. They just look like a victim. They just look like, you know, somebody that you just want to just slap the shit out of because they just walk around looking like they have a sign on their back saying, you know, hit me, kick me, beat me. And so, um, you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah, troll guts. <laughs> Put them on crackers. They taste good, like sardines with some hot sauce. All right. Then, let's see. The women who are full of self-doubt. Those are the ones who, rather than try, they just stay with what they know. They have all these reasons why it's not going to work, why they can't win, why they can't be successful, why they can't get the job, why they can't finish the project, why they can't become out on top, why they can't learn it, be about it, you know, have it, achieve it. They have all these doubts and they focus on that and talk themselves fearfully into failure. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of people that do that. Well, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm not good at that. Well, you know, I don't know nothing about that. Well, you know, but so they, you know, so they basically will, because of, the, of their self-doubt, they think that they, this this is the best that they can do, and they try to. They're content there in mediocrity. You know that they that's it because they don't have any confidence in themselves in doing more and being more. I don't want you guys to do that. You know, I mean, part of being a you know how many things I failed out in my life. It, the list is too long to even think about. I failed at so many things, but you know what? I've also achieved a lot. And the only reason that you that I can achieve a lot is because I'm not afraid to be a failure. Oh, okay, Van. I'll set that up. Oh, that's right. You are over there. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. You did tell me that. Um, yeah, you know, so it's it's the kind of thing, you know, lady, don't be afraid to fail. I mean, you think about like other famous inventors, you know, they have the things that they tried to do and all they look at it, the reason they kept, they kept going is because they said, well, at least now I figured out, you know, what doesn't work so I can knock, knock that off the list. And now I'm going to still focus on the things where there's a definite possibility. Stay positive about yourself. You know, you guys, you fail one time. Oh, my God. You know, I'm so dumb. I'm so stupid. I just never succeeded anything. I'm just useless. And, you know, just talking yourself into the stuff and I just be sitting there looking at these people that do that it's men and women not just women but this show is for women but um it's like my god you know nobody else needs to be your enemy because you got it covered you got all the bases covered you up in the stands you out on the field you in the parking lot of your life just shouting out failure to you that's nobody else there's no room for nobody else to get in there and say anything about you feeling because you got it all covered you're doing all that all by yourself. So, you know, those women like that, you know, you, start, you know, stop that. Stop that talking to yourself like that. And instead say, well, you know, maybe that's what I said, like about this stuff I set up here. I was fucking shit up right and left. And you guys was witnesses to it. I'm like, oh, shit, I don't know what happened. I'm trying to figure it out. And everybody's laughing. You know, everybody was very supportive. And, you know, I finally got it right. So now, it, you know, everything rolls around the way it's supposed to. But it took time, and there were some mistakes made, but I was determined that I was going to get it, and I wanted my show to look a certain way. Now it looks the way that I dreamed that it was going to be. It took a couple of months. I had to read a lot of stuff and learn a lot of stuff and watch a hell of YouTube videos, download stuff, order shit off of Amazon. I was a busy little bee. But now the shit looks the way that I wanted to. Shit rolls, you know, with confidence and professional, and it's you know it looks good. Everybody's you know can be participating. And the next thing we're gonna do, I thought I was gonna get a chance to test it, but let me just kind of interrupt this right now. I didn't get a chance to test it because you know what I had to do yesterday. But 
Um, I already got a phone number. I figured out how to do it. I just have to test it to make sure it works and know I make sure I know how to do it so we can take talk calls on the show. My concern is the troll factor. So what I got to figure out how to screen the calls first, you know, but it's coming. So, you know, by at least by the middle of next month or so, we'll be doing phone calls on the show. OK, I promise. Just give me some time. OK, now afraid to set boundaries. This is a big one with women. This is part of assertiveness. Why? Because when you don't have any any you're not being assertive about what you people the way people can and cannot treat you, talk to you, address you, um, you know, you you just have rules for how they can interact with you, then they gonna do what they want to do. They're gonna treat you the way they treated other people who didn't have any boundaries. It's up to you to say, oh hold up partner, hold it, hold your ponies right there. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what kind of women you've been dealing with. But in this place here, this woman here, we don't do that. You're not, you, I'm not accepting that kind of behavior. This is what you're not going to do. Bap to 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 bap. If you do those things now, especially now that I've told you not to, then this is going to be the repercussions. Bap to bap, bap to bap. Do you understand what I just said? He's going to look at you and go, nah, yes, I do. Okay, so now you have an agreement. So he knows what the rules are for engagement. Should he violate those rules, that means he did so willfully and intentionally, in which case you are supposed to follow through with your repercussions, which were bap de bap bap de bap okay? That's how you do it. You don't say shit unless you're going to follow through and mean it. A lot of women don't have the confidence to do that too. Yes, Collins will be great. I just, like I said, I just got to figure out how to do it though because I don't, you know, want too many. Yeah, something. I got to figure it out. Uh, you know, I'm open to all suggestions. But I don't feel like answering the phone and having fools on it. So that's going to be something I got to think about. So we'll figure that out. Okay, so, you know, you be, don't be afraid to set your boundaries. So you don't want somebody calling you after a certain time of night. You know, you, can ha you have the right to turn your ringer off. You have the right to set your phone to do not disturb hours. That's what I have on mine. So, because I can't remember to always turn it off. So, there's a program, you know, a little thing. You set it. So, at 10 o'clock, my phone shuts down. I can use it. I can watch my movies in bed. I can do all this stuff. I can answer emails and, you know, surf on it. Now, I can do whatever I want to on my phone in the bed. But that phone will not ring and no text messages will come through until 7 a.m. the next day. And that's how I have my phone set. So, I have, I blocked off private time. For me and, you know, me and whoever I'm dealing with that, that week. Because, you know, I be rolling them in and out. And then it's like, you know, that's my time for my dates and my dinner. Or, you know, going to whatever we're going to do. And then, or just, you know, to do my work here, my stuff here. I want private time to do that. And I don't want people calling me and interrupting me and asking me no question. So that's what we do. All right. And you have the right to do that. Women are terrified of saying no. No is a very strong boundary. A lot of women live in horror of saying no because they want to be liked. You care more about people liking you than you do about liking yourself and standing up for yourself. So you give in to people. You run around. You do too much. You accept too much responsibility. You don't even want to say no to your boss. You know, you don't want to do that. I had an interesting exchange with a boss of mine. He wanted this woman in another department wanted me to do some something for her. She was like trying to like take over my life. Now I don't mind helping out. You know what I mean? They call that team player, which I really hate that concept because I'm not a team player. I'm a loner. But you know when you go into that kind of environment, you gotta pretend like you are. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'll roll with it and I'll do it. And um, she wanted too much of my time. I was gonna give her like you know a certain, certain number of hours, and she wanted like double, triple that. From me and I said no I'm not gonna do that so then she went crying to my boss and so he calls me in there and he's like oh you know uh, she wants this and that I said yeah I know but that's, that's not necessary I already set out you know a plan this is how I'm gonna approach the problem it'll all be done in five hours and you know there's no need for any more time to be devoted to that so I give him my you know my outline of what I'm gonna do and how I'm gonna do it and what the topics are and the whole thing I was prepared so he looks at it, he says oh okay well you know Something, something, but you know, but you know, she, she, um, you know, she really thinks that she's nasty. I know, but I'm telling you that that's that's not true. And so then he's like, well, you, um, you know, but I could, you know, just tell you to do it. Okay, see, now that pissed me off. It's like, look here, white boy, you're not, Deb, 
already told you that I'm not doing it. Okay, now these people didn't really know me that well, but it's like, when I say no, that's what I mean. Hell can freeze over, all the little devils go ice skating, the devil will be sealed in one of them blocks like Han Solo forever. I mean, I really know all that will happen and my answer is still gonna be no. So I just looked at him, I said, well, you could do that. You, certainly you have the right to do that. See, that's his right, right? I said, but I have an equal right to get up, grab my purse, and walk out that door. And guess what? Then you won't have me, and you still won't have, she won't have all those hours. So you have to decide which one is more important, having me here or giving her what she wants at my expense. So you, that's the call you have to make. And I was calm as shit. That's, see, that's what happens when you have confidence in yourself. I told you no. I told her white ass no. I'm telling your white ass no. And no ain't going to change just because you try to flex. Because I have the ultimate flex power. I can get the fuck up out of here. And you didn't neither one of you going to get shit out of me. So you decide, white boy, which one you want. Which one's more important to you. And he sat there and he looked at me. And he looked at me, and then he blinked a couple of times while he processed what I had just said to him. And I'm staring dead in his face, just as calm as a cucumber. Because, you know me, I keep shit lined up. You know what I mean? And I'm just looking at him. And so then he looked away, and, you know, he kind of did like this. And he says, well, you know, um, I don't really know anything about it. And so, you know, you're the expert. So, you know, I'll let the two of you work that out. You know, thanks for coming and, let, you know, get briefing me on it. And he sent me out of his office and, and let her deal with my ass. And then I went and told her no. And then that's how that went down. I gave her what I was going to give her, and he stepped smoothly away from the situation, which was the smartest thing for him to do. Don't you get in between two women. That's, you, no man should ever do that. I don't care what the situation is. You let them handle it or you get another woman in there to handle it, but you don't step in. Yes, honey. This we put what do we say? Nit. Nada. None. All that. All kinds of no's. But you know, don't ever be afraid to say no. A lot of you are. Some people are afraid they'll say, Well, you know, I'll get fired. Guess what? So what? You know, they'll have it like, you, you watch you, if you got sick or died or something, they would have another body in that chair before your body even made it out the morgue, okay? Before you made it to the hospital, they would have somebody else sitting in that, in that chair. Don't ever think that you should be loyal to a company, okay? Unless your name is on the letterhead and, you, I mean, on the built thing outside the sign and, you know, on the business license and shit because that's your shit. Other than that, you know, fuck them. You worry about yourself. A lot of women are doormats in their relationships. Whatever the man wants, they say okay. Like we had situations where the women, the man wants to move in with the woman. And she wants, you know, he wants to move in. He wants to move in with her, his mother, wait, his ex-girlfriend's mama. And she went along with it. That was a letter on What the Fuck Wednesday. I swear, you can go back and listen to it. That whole show was full of women who had no boundaries and were the least assertive people I've ever heard of in my life. All she had to do was tell, dude, hell no, I'm not moving over there with your ex's mama. What's wrong with you? You want to go over there, go feel free. I'll just do something else. You know, but you don't you don't just go along with everything just because a guy suggested it. That's how you get stuck in situations where you in a threesome and you crying and shit because your man, you know, you trying to please him and all that stuff. And then, um, you know, you in a problem. I don't understand. I don't understand why you do that. You accept abuse from men in particular. A lot of people do that. Um. You know, mistreatment from men. You let them talk about, talk to you crazy. You let them say foul and funky things to you, and you don't check them. You don't say anything to stop them and put up a boundary or make a rule about it. You just let them do it, and then, you know, you sit there passively and feel bad about it, but you don't stay, stand up for yourself and say, stop saying stuff like that to mother, me, motherfucker, or we're through. And then if he does it again, then you leave him. You know, everybody should get one chance, you know, unless it's like super egregious. Like, okay, you get one chance to put your hands on me, twist my arm, try to choke me. Or something. Okay, that's, that's a one-time deal. We don't get a repeat performance of that, and there's no comeback from that. But, you know, sometimes people might say something like inadvertent, like, well, damn, you know, you're so stupid, something like that. Okay, this is, this, you're going to get a warning. You know, but you call me next thing like a bitch or something like you, but something like that, that's a one-time shot too. But you say something, you know, you so dumb, you why you so, you know, that was stupid or something like that. I'm going to give you your warning. I'm going to do my rattlesnake tail, shake at you, and then you do some shit like that again. I'm going to strike and bite, and then it's going to be over. 
but you know every every woman has to have her own level of it but you need to have some kind of boundaries in place where you assertively tell the other person what they can and cannot do how they can and cannot treat you or you will or will not be in the, continue to be in a relationship a friendship um a marriage an employee of that individual all right um you're afraid of asking for what you want this is real bad in bed because how many women complain about the man can't fuck right he don't know what he's doing it you know it's not good for me i don't enjoy it you know it's it's i have to always got go in the bathroom after with my toy i do all the stuff you all be saying why can't you just tell him what to do or how it's not working and you lie and say you know pretend that it's you know like it was some kind of magical experience so you got the head dude's head all blown up with some lies why can't you tell him no you know some of the things that are going on here are really not you know they're just it's not doing anything for me i'm sure it must have worked to some women in your past but you know every woman's body is different every woman's interests are different every woman's response is different and so we need to sit down you know we need to go through some things here and figure out what's going to work for me so that when we're together it's satisfying for both of us because right now you're the only one that's having a good time and i'm not really you know participating in the good time so there's no point of me doing this particular activity with you so you know you have to figure out you know your words to say it don't be aggressive in me nigga you can't fuck with shit okay you don't need to do all that unless you threw with them and you don't want to see him anymore but if it's somebody that you you know do want to have a relationship with you have to present it in a way that's going to be something that's going to mean you two join together and work together to do it you know to come to uh an improved situation all right um oh you focus on what you think other people's want you focus about what other people think about you so you don't really do what you want to do because you're too afraid of what somebody else might think or what somebody else might say. You don't want to look bad in front of somebody else. All this kind of stuff. Why do you care about what other people think or do? That has always been so interesting to me. Have people, you yeah, already said non earlier. Yet. And I just I used to know how to say it in Russian. I had a boyfriend who spoke fluent Russian, but I forgot. So you know, this is the kind of thing that you have to care more about yourself what you think about yourself you have to be able to go and look in the mirror at the person there with no makeup on hair all you know whatever and still look at her and say you know girl you got it going on you are the shit you are so fine and so fly you so this and you know give yourself big ups because you just just because but so many of you can't stand to look at yourself unless you, you can't stand what you look like unless you all made up with false eyelashes and all the whole works. You can't stand the thought that somebody might see you without your hair done. You have to feel like you have to look a certain way, drive a certain kind of car, have a you know, certain kind of, of uh, jewelry. I mean, all kind of stuff. You are into printing, putting on a, a, um, a front to get the approval of others while you're empty inside. And I'm telling you to please stop doing that and focus on building up the woman that's on the inside. Real, do some self-realization work, okay? Oh, selfless service, that's very true. But I was gonna get to that because it's like giving, you know, um, you give all to other people because that's supposed to be, you know, like a godly thing to be of service to others to men and uh you know to be submissive and all this kind of stuff as a matter of fact that's on one of the uh the, that's on the second column over here submissive equals nice and a lot of women are even afraid of being considered to be a bad mother because they put boundaries on their children's behavior Oh, they talk about the cut off a friend but will stay with the man because that's their mentality is that men are more important than women that's that's common they that's all the same types of women that be like well you know at least i got a man they sit up there with a big old black eye and a lip the size of the moon and then but they you know at least i got a man you know so they feel like even though he's beating their ass and disrespecting them cheating on them bringing them stds and all kind of stuff that he's still better than having no man at all you know that's really kind of sad but that's what happened 
Um, let me skip a few of these. Let me see. Oh. Oh. Apologize all the time. Oh, my God. I know you guys have seen women like that. Everything you say. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Everything they're supposed to be so sorry about every damn thing. It's like, why are you sorry all the time? I mean, nobody's asking you for apology. I mean, surely some of the stuff you did on purpose. So why are you apologizing? You know, everything is an apology. And that gets on my nerves. It's like, I just want you to stop talking. Don't say nothing. Don't apologize. Don't really say anything. Um, let me see. Let me skip a few of these. Let me put it back over here so you guys can see it while I'm looking at it, too. Um... Fear of conflict. Oh, that's a lot of them. You fear to make your man mad. You fear to, to stand up for yourself because you think somebody's going to get upset or angry and start yelling at you. Um, you know, there are times when that may be realistic, but there are most times when, uh, you know, you need to stand up for yourself. Like, say, on the job, somebody, you know, you're doing something and somebody you've got a big copy job going right and you walk away and you come back somebody to stop your job and set your papers all to the side so they can use the copy machine okay well what do you do you say hey but you know the, the deal is you take turns you need to get your stuff out of there so i can finish my copy job well i was in a rush and like i'm not now no that's not appropriate office behavior what you just did you need to wait your turn or go to another floor and use the copy machine there if you're in a rush so, you know, stuff like that, you don't want to go to blows with the person, but you need to check people. Because um, we used to have this place I worked, right? We had, like, copy, just copy machines all over the place. And we had this one that was a, was dedicated to um, the department that had to do immediate responses to stuff. So they had to get their stuff, like, right now. I mean, it was, like, law, you know, police involved and all this kind of stuff. So they had to get copies made like immediately and send them to the investigators and the social workers and stuff like on the spot. I and mean, you didn't have time to be waiting. So there, if the rule was there were no big copy jobs in this room on this machine. So I go in there one day and this girl sitting up there just like make, trying to make all these copies. I walked over and I hit the stop button and I said, you need to remove all of your documents from this copy machine. And she's like, well, why? Because you know, something, something, something. I said, you know the rule for this department. You know that you cannot tie up the copy machine like that. You're fully aware of this, correct? Well, yeah, but I said, no. Get all of your things and take them out right now. Okay, now I'm the supervisor. Don't make me write your ass up. Okay, I'm not, wasn't her supervisor, but I don't give a fuck. I'll write you up anyway for violating the rules in my department. And so she got herself and she, you know, looking at me all kinds of crazy. You think I gave any fucks? She was went and complained and everybody's like, well, but you know the rules, so that's your problem. And so after that, time I saw her, she was like, you know, giving me the mean mug. And I just looked at her like, what the fuck ever? Bitch, I bet your ass won't come over here making no giant copy jobs in the future. I bet you that. So, you know, it's just things like that. You know, you can't just let people do what they want to do and it's stuff that involves you that's going to impact you or that's going to impede your progress your success you have to get them out of the way and a lot of women also have a great fear of being abandoned which is why you will stay with men who cheat on you and beat on you and lie to you and stuff you know because you want to quite a quote make it work because of your fear of being of him leaving so you just go through every kind of kind of change in the world to keep the relationship because you are terrified of being alone. And I think, you know, like I said, these, you know, these are things that you can look at this video again and maybe write these, put it on pause, write these down if you want to and think about them. And um, that last one is we already talked about actually first was being passive aggressive. And I showed you the slide where um, that where it showed all the, um, you know, the three, the two ends of the spectrum as well as the one in the middle. So that is, you know, what I wanted to say about um, that particular aspect of, of behavior. And I'm sure you can think of some examples for yourself where you could have been more assertive. Remember, assertive is not aggressive. Assertiveness is where you give people the space 
and to be who they want to be. You don't try to force anybody to your way of thinking. You give them the option to do what they want to do, but what you make very clear is they're not going to do it here. They're not going to do it in a way that impacts you and your life, and you have every right to do that. That's the difference between being assertive and being passive, and then, of course, aggressive. You know, you want to just, like, fling people around and fire on folks and start throwing hands and whatnot. <laughs> we don't need to do all that either. Yeah, those excuses. Well, you know, it wasn't my fault. Or you made me do it. Or, you know, so-and-so, you know, it's, somehow it's going to be everybody else's fault, everybody else's responsibility um, other than theirs. And uh, that's that's a passive thing, too. Very passive and co cowardly to boot. Nursing crippled your thinking. You always, you taught to always be there for someone. Yeah, but see, the difference is, put that into perspective. Put that into perspective, though. When you were working as a nurse, your ass was getting paid. Okay, once you walk out that door, you ain't getting paid to be there for other people. You're getting paid to be there for other people when you put foots inside that business. Okay, you don't apply that stuff to your whole life. You apply it to the service that you provide in exchange for a paycheck and retirement and health care benefits and paid vacations and paid sick days and learning contributions for your CEUs and all of that. That's when you were doing that. Okay, that was an exchange of, of labor for benefits. Once you set foot out that door, then that ceases to exist. You don't need to confuse the two. Okay, personal life and professional career are two completely different things. And I'm, I'm really sad nobody told you that. Cause you, I mean, they have to reinforce that for you. Yes, they are very confused about it, Van. And that's why, you know, I wanted to make that sign and really talk about this. Because some women go, um, you know, to the other extreme when they're trying to get out of their uh, passive side they you know become aggressive and they want to go off on everybody and all that stuff you know that comes with a lot of risk you know you're trying to stand up for yourself standing up for yourself means you know assertively establishing your boundaries and letting people know what you're not going to accept from them but you don't have to do that in a way where you have to cuss them all out and do all this kind of stuff you know I mean I do it sometimes but you know I'm past the point where I give a fuck most of you are younger than me so you're still in the you know, if you give a fuck era. I used to be like that. Now I give no fucks at all about too much of anything. Like, whatever. Even if I cuss you out, you'll live. You know, it's, it's, you'll either live or you die trying to get over it. I mean, what you want me to do? Yes, really, girly. That's all. I mean, nurses are wonderful people. You know, I just can't say enough good things about just about every nurse that I've ever had contact. There was a couple that was like trifling and too bit and all. But I'd say 90% of the nurses that I've met, you know, in, in my lifetime have been some of the most caring, wonderful people that I've ever met. It's like hard to even believe that there's people that care this much about other folks walking the face of the earth. They're like angels or something. And, uh, you know, so I understand, like, you know, for people who are sick and stuff, the nurse is like a beacon of light for them. So you giving to people like that, you might even be helping them survive, you know, because you're giving them something that they can't give themselves right then. Care, support, encouragement, a smile, tenderness. Nurses give all those kind of things. But remember once you, that you're getting paid for that. You know, you're not, you don't take that and give that to just anybody. Okay, that's your career. It would be like a doctor walking around, going in restaurants, trying to give free exams to everybody. You know, you don't do that. You don't do that. You cut that off. She said, I had to break off my supervisor. Evil woman had the nerve to raise her voice at me because I wasn't doing someone else's job the way she wanted. Fuck it, bitch. You want it done a certain way, you do it your damn self. That's always a solution. I'm not doing it the way you want it done. Let me get up out the seat. Have a seat. Have at it. There you go. You know how to do it so well. Let me see you make that happen. Yeah. Well, see, mine is the inside of my ass, but we're on the same page. <laughs> the pain is real. Yes, it is. It is. But, you know, sometimes these people, I don't know, they get on these jobs and they start thinking because they had a title of supervisor that they become bulletproof or something. But, you know, people get mad. You better watch how you handle yourself. That's why I say you don't need, don't ever be aggressive on the job. 
you be assertive but you always leave room for the other person to say no and to you know give their other opinion or whatever you don't be trying to bring your hood shit up into the job that does not work that should get you fired and or killed because some people you know will leave or you act stupid with them they'll go away and come back the next day with a gun so you better be you know you gotta watch your mouth so this is good training for those of you who tend to be a little bit too aggressive in your interactions with people you know you can't treat everybody like that and somebody might be just that much more of a gangster than you just because they in there with a suit or a little dress on and stuff and got their hair done and some makeup on that don't mean shit you know she could have been in the gang when she was a teenager come up there roll up there with her girls that she's still friends with and stomp your ass into the pavement you better watch your mouth but that's why you know, these are good skills to have when you go into a work environment to know how to stand up for yourself, but to do it in a way that is respectful of other people who are not you. Everybody's not going to see it the way that you do. You know, people are crazy. Some folks just not wrapped too tight. Just because they went to school and they got their little piece of paper and now they're in the corporate America, they, you know, home is still home. Once they hit that door, they'd be like, yo, uh, 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 uh. And then all that hood come out. So, you know, you better just just, just watch yourself. For real, though. You know, Shanika and Letitia will come up there and stomp your ass with grease all over their face and stuff. So, you know. Yeah, it's the co work. I mean, working in, you know, you could write a whole book about working and people, all the different personalities that come up there and just act a fool. It's just too much. It's just, <laughs> that's why, you know, these, these tools that I'm trying to give you guys work as well in a corporate, you know, in a work environment as they do in a, in a uh, romantic relationship that works well with your parents and children. It, I mean, as you know, you're the parent, it works with your children and it works for you to dealing with your parents as well as your siblings. I mean, just anywhere, anywhere where you have to interact with other people that might be trying to get you to do something that you don't want to do. This is very, very important for teenage girls because they're going to be put into a position where they're going to be starting to deal with boys, right? And the boys are going to be after that one thing. You've got to give your daughters the tools to stand up for themselves, to understand that, yeah, you might like this boy, but that don't mean shit because next week it'll be like it's somebody else while you still stuck on stupid thinking you're going to give him your coochie and all this love and be sucking his dick and all this old shit and you know because he wants you to and that's going to keep him around and all this kind of stuff in the meantime he's talking about her, your daughter degrading her teasing her posting up about her what she did and how she's a freak on the online and all this kind of stuff you got to warn your girls about these boys the boys ain't shit they're not shit they're not even worth shit on a cracker so it's like you know you you can't be like trying to build them up talking about well you know your man this and your man that he's a little boy and she's a little girl he don't have shit he ain't about shit and you know let's be straight with these girls we got to be straight with them and keep and teach them that you know they have a right to say no and that if they need some backup that you're there you know you they uncles you know, whoever, this, they not, you're not going to let them slip through the cracks. You're not going to let nobody do nothing to them. You're going to come out. The family's going to rally around and beat some ass. You only you have 15 fucks left? Girl, I only, I'm down to my last one. It's in a safe deposit box in case I need it one day. But thus far, it's been safe. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we want to... You know, we do this show. A lady was right. I forgot who it was now, her name. Oh, dang it. But she's has her, she said she has her middle school daughters and her friends watching the show to get them ready, you know, for high school and what they're going to be running into with these little boys. And actually, even in middle school, you know, the high school boys start hitting on the little girls that's in, you know, the, the eighth, seventh, eighth and ninth grade. Um, and seventh grade, you know, like 14, 15 years old. That's when it starts, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old. That's when it starts. So you got to, you know, give them the tools early. A lot of people are like, well, you know, this, they don't need to be talking about this kind of stuff so young. Yes, they do. The older dudes start trying to trail your daughters down the street at 12. So you got to give them some tools. Don't be trying to keep them in, you know, in the, va in the dark, in the vacuum. They need to know what's happening in a realistic way and how to set boundaries with these people, to feel confident enough to say no and to, you know, to scream and to push and to run and to tell somebody everything that happens to them so that you can be there to help them and protect them if, you, they, you know, if they need it. I'm telling you, but this, you know, they can't be passive. 
they're like, you know, they want people to like them. They're at that age, they're very susceptible to peer pressure and to doing whatever guys want them to do because they want the guy to like them. They want to have a boyfriend. They have, you know, this is in their mind. So you guys, you know, don't think like an adult. Think like a 14-year-old when you're talking to your 13 and 14 and 15-year-olds. Think like a little kid. And then, you know, what's, what's important to them, put yourself at their level, you know, and then you can see things from their perspective and then you can talk to them about the things that are going to be facing, that they're going to be facing and tell them, you know, how to handle it from their perspective. That's very important. Very, very important. Uh-oh. Yeah, getting your point. That's, but a lot of women are into that too, Van. It's not just bl black people. Women, period. Because women, you know, what do they always say in their vice letters? How do I make him understand? Isn't that a common theme throughout the letters? Every woman says that. How do I make him understand? They're about getting their point across. Even when a guy cheats on them and stuff, and they're like, well, you know, I want to talk to him. I want him to admit it. What is that? That is about getting him, to, you know, to understand their perspective. That is That kind of con communication is seems to be very important to most women. I don't know where that comes from. It's just something I've noticed. And... Uh, well, that's what I said, um, Miss Fuller, Mayful. Um, I said, you know, 13, 14, 15. I said, that, you know, middle school, seventh and eighth grade middle schoolers is where it starts. So whatever the age that is. I thought that was like 13, 14. Um, did you see a video of a little girl talking about she likes boys and wants a little boyfriend? No. How old was she? I must have missed that one, but I don't know. In certain cultures, I mean, they start pushing that stuff, you know, pretty early. You know, like I know the Koreans, you know, it's a very uh, couples oriented culture. And uh, they, you know, make those kind of jokes and they start preparing the little boys to be protectors and husbands and fathers and stuff. Shit, starting at four and five years old. They start telling him about how he's going to protect the girl and how to do it and you know how he's a gentleman and he's a G and he's all this kind of stuff. It starts early, and then, like I said, I you know, told the story about how I used to live across the, the hall, uh, the uh, condo across the parking lot from a family, and that father was working with his little boy um, from the time I lived there for 12 years. And uh, so when we first moved there, that little boy was like three, and uh, the father would take him and always was talking to him about you know how to treat mother and his sisters and. Buy, take him to buy mommy flowers, they, you know, and uh, Mother's Day card flowers and stuff and birthday presents. And he was always talking to him about how you treat women and things that you do nice for women. So by the time, you know, we moved, a little kid is like 14 or 15 or something. And then, um, you know, he was getting his little girlfriends and he treated them all very well because his father taught him how to do that. And I said, that's what's missing, I think, in a lot of black boys. They don't get that kind of mentorship from their father or anything else. They get told that, you know, girls ain't shit and bitches and hoes and, you know, use them and this and that. And so the messages, you know, versus that, what I heard and observed versus what most black boys get, complete opposite, completely different. It was just something to see. And I witnessed that with my own eyes over a period of years, how I'm telling you, how the man raised his son. And when he was out there fixing stuff, and he had his little boy right with him, teaching him what tools were then. And then when the kid got older, he could see into the car. You know, he would let him do the wrench and all this stuff. I mean, he spent a lot of time with his sons teaching him things. And, you know, working inside the house, he even brought him over to my house. I had a, some problem with my toilet. And so, you know, he was out there, he was working. I said, oh, can you take a look at this real quick? And he did. He ch -ch 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 tinkered with it and fixed it and stuff. And the little boy was watching. He was explaining it to him and everything. And I'm like, see, that's, that's how you're supposed to do when you're a father. You take your responsibility of raising your son seriously. And, I, you know, like I said, I witnessed that firsthand. So the kid was nothing but a toddler, you know, when we moved there. And so um, I saw him grow up and I saw how his father, you know, what things his father emphasized with him to develop him into a fine young man. And it was something to see. And then you compare that to, you know, what's going on in the black community. I was like, oh man, these kids are just light years away from this. Yeah, the father has to stay around to do that. That's true. But you know, sometimes, now sometimes, this is when we get back to the women now, 
this is why the next show I'm doing, which is tomorrow, we're going to be talking about vetting men. We're going to be talking about vetting. That's on this show tomorrow. Since I missed so many days, I was kind of, you know, the voting thing, and then I didn't feel well. So, yeah, it just was a bunch of shit that went happened to this. This week just got shot. So, but tomorrow, that's what I want to talk about, you know, because when we talk about this, you know, fathers have to stay around. Yes, they do. But sometimes y'all be dealing with some men and having raw sex and having babies by motherfuckers that should not have even had the time of day from you. And I be looking like, what were you thinking and these women that have, you know, the band already got four, five, ten kids. And he ain't been with none of them women. And then you going to be baby mama number six, seven, eight, you know, 11 teen. Why do you, why, why, why? You got some motherfucker just got up out of jail. He don't have no job, don't have no money. He trying to live with his mama and stuff because she signed for him to be, you know, paroled to her house. And then you dealing with the clown. And then the next thing you know, your ass is pregnant. Why? why and then you talk about you don't want to get an abortion why why so i have a lot of things i want to talk about it might be an uncomfortable conversation for many so i'm warning you now you know a massage i need everything i need like you know because i had that car accident you know just i just two weeks ago was a car i just have just been having a lot going on my neck is all fucked up. My back is hurting. It's just been interesting. But I'm insisting on, you know, trying to do what I committed to doing. Because I am a person of my world. My word, rather. It may happen a little late. Because, you know, I you know, I got to juggle some stuff around. And I wasn't feeling real good. But I am here. So, yes. Why? Why? As come in and say, wait. <laughs> you know, what? 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 What was, you, what was you thinking? Why did that happen? Were you thinking at all? If you saw, what were you thinking about? Why did you come to the conclusion that this was a good idea? So those are the things that we're going to be talking about tomorrow. So if you have time, please stop by and join us. It's going to build, it builds on top of this. Because some of this is where the man says, you know, I, I don't want to use condom. You know, stop using, I don't know. A case, a assertive woman would say, no, that's not an option, sir. Either you use this, which is for both of our protection, or we don't have any, as they say in the, in the books, like they say Congress. We won't be having any Congress. And so um, that's your right to do that because we're talking about your body, your health, your fertility is at stake here. Your, your, your very life is at stake. And yet you won't say no. You won't insist on protecting yourself. You're just going to go along with it in a passive way because that's what he says he wants. That's what you're going to do. So we're going to talk about so so this you know like I said it's like another it's an added component of this and without realizing who and accepting who you are and striving to be your best person and and self realization and self actualization then you're going to fall prey to that kind of thing because you're like a leaf in the wind. You're just blowing around trying to please everybody and do everything that somebody else wants you to do without really thinking about what's best for you and staying on your path. You don't do that, and that requires someone to be assertive, to assertively say, no, we're not going to do that. No, we're not going to do that. This is all I'm going to do. This is all I'm going to give you permission to do with me. Okay? You went to the bank and thought you was in hell. Wait a minute, that sounds interesting. A serial impregnator besides a baby daddy, Pookie, Ray Ray, or Ho? Mm, that's a good one. I don't know that. We could think up one, though. I just call them pro prolific baby breeders, but that's too long. We need like a little, a jaunty little name. I know what you mean. I don't know that answer to that, Van. I don't know. Because then, you know, you be getting shit all in your mouth. You got them canker sores and stuff off. Your face is all fucked up. You got genital warts all in your mouth and shit. Because, you know, them warm, moist places is the same thing. I'm not trying to be. I don't know. I don't know what they be thinking. I'm too, I'm telling you, I'm too vain. I just can't be looking like that. I had a friend who used to be a sex educator. Honey, he had these, like, big old, like, 
I don't know, you know, so you can see him in the back of the classroom size, big poster board thing. He had this special case he had to carry him in that had wheels on it. And he would put them things up in the school, for, you know, when he did his little his speeches. And, oh, my God, I saw those pictures, and I was grossed out. Yes, the fires, the air. The air has been so horrible. You know, you can't fucking breathe. It's just terrible. We already went through this a couple of months ago. With the big fire up in uh, Marin County. Now it's, there's more shit burning. This one's the biggest one's in Chico. There was one in Fairfield, too, and a couple of other ones. It's like the whole state's on fire. Some stuff going on down in Southern California, too. I don't know. We it's something to call them, but, um, you know, these women, you know, you thinking that this is something that you need to do and you, you can't say no and, you know, or he won't like you. He'll leave you. You should be blessed, feeling blessed that he leaves you because he's a toxic person. Only somebody like that who's, you know, so insistent on doing something that's unsafe for you and a direct violation of what you said that you want to do and the way you want to run your life. See, that's somebody that shouldn't be there. This is part of the vetting process. But you guys, so many young women are connecting the dots. They're not understanding when you say, I want this, and he says something else. That means he needs to go. That doesn't mean that you give in to him and do what he wants, and then you end up all fucked up. That That's where they are. Yeah, I am in the area. Yeah, it's about 50 miles away, the closest one, which is not that far. You know, and the air is just, like, blowing. It, oh, it's just awful. You go outside, it's like the air is brown. I have, like, one of those mask things that you wear. I learned from last time, when those last fires, I didn't have any. I was breathing that shit, and I was sick for a week. But now, one of my friends on Facebook, because we couldn't get any masks around here. All the stores were sold out. Amazon, couldn't get on Amazon. So she went to the store in her area and got some and shipped them to me. I will be forever grateful because I was fucked up. And, you know, there was no, I couldn't get any masks. They were all sold out. So she found some for me. Like, stay, we're talking states away. And then she mailed them to me like overnight mail so that I, um, you know, could have it. And so once I got them, you know, I started, my breathing started improving. Uh, but as long as you know, I had to keep breathing that stuff in, I wasn't getting any better. And I was down for a week. It was terrible. But yes, she did that for me. So it's still for me, you know, you got people that love you. I mean, you haven't even, I haven't even met this woman. But, um, you know, my suffering was important to her to the point where she took all those steps to make sure that, you know, I could could get myself back together and I will always 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 think of her with the greatest kindness I'm telling you sister just went over and above to handle something for me um but yeah so that's what um we're going to be doing here tomorrow and I hope that some of you can join I know it's Sunday and the sports will be on and all this old stuff's going on but um for those who have you know, who want a little bit more information about how to determine if a guy is right for them or not pretty early on, you know, by observing, looking, and listening. That's what will be the topic tomorrow. It's already on the events thing. I think they're going to start promoting it at the top of my channel um, tonight. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be posting it up on, on Instagram and Twitter and stuff to get the word out. But, yeah, how to properly vet men and a voice called Sucker Free Sunday. Sucker Free. You know, that was the title of my first book. And uh, Sucker Free Love. So that's what we're going to be talking about. How you can choose a man and be sucker free. Now, unfortunately, a lot of, for a lot of women, that's going to mean that you're going to be single. But, uh, you know, if you would rather be single and happy than in a relationship with the wrong man, then this is the video for you, the show for you. That'll be tomorrow. Things starting at 4 p.m. Pacific, which is 7 if you're on the East Coast. Most people have a holiday on Monday, so we should be able to have a good time and stay around as long as my voice holds out, all right? So I'm going to take my 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 uh, happy ass and lay back down for a little bit. And um, um, abusive stuff. Well, I talked about that moving out and stuff in a couple of videos um, already, Sydney. Um, hmm, I don't remember the titles right now, but uh, they were done earlier this year um, about parents and codependent uh, people and abusive parents and stuff. 
if I find it, if you're gonna put a chat, uh, I'll put it in the bottom of the um, in the show description of this page, and I'll try to remember to tag you. But just look for it there. Not today. I'm 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 gonna do it tomorrow, right? Because I'm starting to fade. But I hope that was some good information for you guys. You know, thank you for coming and uh, sitting in on this chat. Um, we're gonna you know, get my butt up out of here and be back tomorrow hopefully back to you know 100 percent tomorrow yes it is sucka s-u-c-k-a ricky we don't put e-r on our words we hood around here anyway i'll talk to you guys <laughs> i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye bye